Hey, this is Bradley Chubb, and you're listening to The Snap. Hey, this is Cortland Sutton. Hey, this is Tim Patrick. And you're listening to The Snap, Snap with Sydney Jones on Broncos Podcast Network. Yeah! What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back to the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube for the latest edition of The Snap. I'm your host, Sydney Jones, and today we have a fantastic episode for you all as I am joined by NFL Network host Colleen Wolf. We'll discuss some early season predictions, which Broncos she thinks will have a breakout season, and of course, discuss her role with NFL Network. Colleen, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Much better now that we're talking. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited to have you on. We were just talking a little bit before this started. I know the off season really isn't an off season in the NFL, but are getting a chance to relax a little bit. I know training camp and honestly, the NFL season is right around the corner. Oh my God. I can't believe it. I mean, that, that's a, that's a happy groan. Um, it goes so fast. Like I feel like everybody talks about the off season, but really it's kind of just the slower season than the uh, regular season. But it's, uh, I can't believe the training camp is right around the corner. I feel like every year I get finished with the draft and I'm like, I have all of this time to do all of the things. I'm going to organize my life, every closet, every, like do all the things that I haven't done. And then all of a sudden I'm like getting my training camp assignments. <laughs> so yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a really good time though. I'm actually going to Greece in a little bit. So I'll get a little R and R and then it's off to camp. I know people always ask me, you know, what are you doing in the off season or, you know, is it slow? And I'm like, yes, it's slow, but we got a ton of changes around here in Denver, you know, with the Broncos this off season, new coaching staff, new franchise quarterback. And Colleen, what are your thoughts on what general manager George Payton was able to do since the end of the season? What an off season for you guys. It must be so exciting to be in that building with a team that has just completely overhauled itself over the off season. It, it looks completely different and in a division that's so competitive. I mean, everybody talks about the arms race that is the AFC West, but it's true. And this team always had so many good pieces of talent, but just couldn't put it all together. Obviously the quarterback position was that main thing that was left and bringing in Russell Wilson, like the fact that the Broncos were able to get a quarterback of his caliber this off season, when everyone was talking about the, the quarterback class, not being what it should be in the draft or not what, at least what right. we're used to in the draft talent wise. And there really weren't any free agents that were seemingly available that were super talented. Everyone was talking about Aaron Rodgers, what he would do. But I mean, the Russell Wilson component now, when you add that, it is it just supercharges this entire team. And they just have... I think the energy around this team is so different now because you bring in a new head coach and he's so much fun and he has such a different kind of energy about him. And so I just, I think that Denver is probably had the best off season of any team in the entire league. I mean, I agree. I'm a little bit biased, but I agree. You know, you mentioned it, the energy here just in the building this off season has changed completely, you know, with head coach Nathaniel Hackett with Russell Wilson, but let's talk about the AFC West a little bit. Like you said, a ton of talent added in just about every single team. Do you feel like this is the hardest division that you've seen in the league in recent years, or honestly, maybe ever? It's not, it's not even a question. It's not even close. This division is just stacked with talent and for a while it was the nfc west so i feel like it's kind of just been in the west for a while but now that you have obviously patrick mahomes and the chiefs have been the team that everyone has been trying to catch up to and then when you have Justin Herbert, the young talent that he is, he's only going to get better. And Brandon Staley, what they've done this off season, I love all the moves that they've made as well. And, and then you have Vegas, which is doing their own thing. And they bring in one of the best wide receivers in the entire league. They add that to the roster too with Derek Carr. And it's just, it's the division is so difficult. And to play in that division, you have to be so competitive. And I just... I really am so excited to see what happens because it's going to be fireworks. It's so many of them week after week after week. And I mean, I, I know you mentioned when you brought this podcast in 
that we we're going to talk maybe about some under the radar stars or anything like that with the Broncos. I'm really excited about Javante Williams. Like for me, that's the guy I'm watching. I cannot wait to see what he's able to do. I know that Melvin Gordon is back and that he is sometimes eating into that time that Javante Williams could have on the field in terms of carries. But I think that Javante is going to really pop this year, especially when you consider that in years past, teams and defenses, they didn't necessarily have to plan for a Russell Wilson for that passing game to be a serious threat. And now when you have Russell Wilson and the receivers that are there in Denver, Defenses are going to have their hands full, and that's only going to be beautiful things here for Javante Williams. And I think that he should probably get the lion's share of the carries. I'm obviously not making that decision, but he just has such talent, the way that he can break tackles. I mean, his future is just so bright in the league. I agree. I mean, Javante was a firecracker last year. Like you said, he just does not go down on first contact and it'll be fun to see. I mean, that was only his rookie year, him going into his second year and not to mention another rookie last year who had a great season, Pat Sertan, he's going into his second year. What are you hoping to see maybe from him and how he jumps even, even more from last year? I mean, I would, I think that when you have all of these pieces, like there's, there's just no way around it. This team is going to improve exponentially. And I'm so excited to see Sertan and, and what he's able to do. And this entire roster, like when I look at it top to bottom, defense and offense, like everybody is going to be talking about Russell Wilson, no matter what. Everyone's going to be talking about the offense. But I feel like this defense just does not get enough credit. And they are so improved. And, and I just think that when you look at the division and the quarterbacks that they have to, this defense that the Broncos have and that they put together so, so gorgeously this off season, they have the schedule is absurd and the quarterbacks that they have to defend. I mean, they're going to be able to put on a show. And I think that that is really going to be something that Broncos fans can celebrate all season long. Right. You, you mentioned the schedule. I mean, not the easiest, but not the toughest either. We do have a couple tough stretches throughout. So I got to ask Colleen, your early prediction here. Do you think the Broncos are going to make the playoffs this season? I think so. I'm going to go out there and say yes, uh, just because the Russell Wilson effect. I mean, you, you automatically have to put them in there. And look, it's the offseason. So I'm optimistic about pretty much everybody at this point. <laughs> But I'm not blowing smoke when I say that the Broncos will make the playoffs because they should. On paper, they absolutely already have. Now they really just have to go out, put it all together, and execute it all. Well, I hope you're right. Going to keep my fingers crossed. Colleen, appreciate your thoughts on the team. I want to switch gears just for a couple minutes now. As many of my listeners know here on the snap, one of my main goals is to highlight some of the most prominent and dominant women in the NFL. And you certainly fit into that category. So just want to dive into your career a little bit. And just to start, Colleen, what exactly does your role with NFL Network entail? Um, a little bit of everything. I feel like I'm sort of a utility player with them. I can't believe I'm going into my ninth season with <laughs> the network. It just kind of blows my mind. Yeah. And when I started, they brought me in to do a digital project. I was a host for them uh, on that for a little while. It changed, had so many different iterations. And from that, I did fantasy, I did total access, a daily show for a little bit. Obviously, Thursday night football will be a little different this year. Um, we'll still be doing some Thursday shows for the network in studio, but it's kind of a little all over the place. I'll be doing some podcast stuff with around the NFL, and we're kind of just still working out some different things that we can do. But I mean, my, my role has been all over the place from flying three times a week to different stadiums, to host shows, to waking up at like 2 a.m. to do morning shows on the West Coast for East Coast time. And so it's really, it's a lot of fun. I get to work with a ton of different people. The roster that we have there is fantastic. I feel like I have like 37 older brothers. Uh, they're all, everyone's always looking out for each other and always taking care of each other. So it's a really good place to be. You mentioned your time at the NFL Network, but kind of what did your path look like to get there? 
Um, it was, I, I mainly, I started in Philly and it was not something that I was looking to do. I, I didn't really expect to be on air or even go into sports. I was going to be an art teacher. <laughs> and wow. then this was kind of a little bit of a left turn that I took. I worked in sports radio for a little bit with some internships in Philly and then got into television and production. And I did a ton of stuff behind the scenes first, which eventually really helped me just kind of know all of the ins and outs and, and how everything was done. And so I was a producer, I built cameras, I built graphics, edited all of the things. And I finally ended up getting the, an opportunity to come out to NFL. And it was sort of out of the blue. It was right when I was going to quit TV and broadcasting altogether. I had been in local news uh, in Philadelphia for about three and a half years doing sports and kind of felt like I was over it a little bit. I was just getting bored. And then NFL came around the opportunity. And so moved across the country and started the job in LA and the rest is history. Well, how have you seen kind of the industry change over the years? You know, I feel like, especially now there's such an emphasis on social media with that being, you know, the outlet that most fans use to consume sports. It's so true. Everything, obviously linear television is a dying medium. I really don't even watch it that much. So it's, everything is truly digital and social media is the driving factor. There's just a constant need for content and to be creative and to be able to pivot and learn and figure out how to do things on the fly. And the more you can do, the more in demand you'll be. But it's been it's been a, a really cool journey to watch as everything changes and be able to kind of have all these different opportunities to learn with the different platforms like TikTok and Instagram and yeah. Twitter, obviously. And that's only going to continue. And I love the direct access that we get to players now because players have their own podcasts, their own shows, they're breaking their own news. And so it's kind of like a little bit of the wild west, but that's what really makes it fun. Yeah, it's crazy to see what Pat McAfee has done with his show. Yeah, exactly. And that's like, that's what people want. They want something that is a little less polished. They want something that's more real and feels like a conversation that you'd be having with your friends, with your family in just like a bar and, you know, at your house or whatever. And that's exactly what it feels like when you watch Pat, because you don't have the confines of a studio show that has all of these elements that you have to get to. And there are still places for those shows. But I think the Pat McAfee model, which Dan Patrick also has, it's just, it's a really cool, different way to consume media. And that's definitely going to become even more popular. Absolutely. Well, last one, Colleen, kind of going off of that, you know, what's one piece of advice you'd give someone looking to get into the industry or someone who's trying to get, uh, make their next jump in the industry? Uh, I would say to someone that's trying to get into the industry, do it for the right reasons. Do it because you love to tell stories or you love football or like, don't do it because you think you're going to get rich and famous or something like that, because that rarely happens. And if it does happen, the window is so small and then it's kind of over. So do it because you love it and that's what you want to do. And then good things will happen. I love it. Well, Colleen, truly can't thank you enough for taking the time to join me today. It's been such a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's episode of The Snap. Thank you all for tuning in and for your support. A big thank you again to Colleen Wolf for joining me in Broncos country. Make sure to follow her on Twitter. Her handle is at Colleen Wolf. And make sure to follow the Broncos Podcast Network on Twitter and YouTube to stay up to date on the latest episodes. I'll see you all next time.